Oh, that's better. Sorry, I cannot come back after two months and not come up with some wildly inappropriate, possibly ignorant, offensive, and obnoxious COVID humor. But if we can't make some light out of this situation, we, we might as well not even bother. That being said, I have been in contact with a couple of YouTube creators. We got some stickers in the other day, well actually a couple weeks ago, from Maddie's workshop. Now if you don't know his channel yet, he actually won one of the prizes, for at least, maybe two, for the uh, tool making competition, the TMC 2020. Now he's actually made quite a lot of beautiful tools. He just finished a build recently on an oil can build, very much uh, the same style as an Eagle Oiler. Beautiful. Made a couple of them, I believe. And honestly, my favorite of his builds was that uh, gear puller he made. Absolutely awesome. So if you guys want to check out some awesome tools made right in a fella's shop, go check out his channel. That's Maddie's Workshop. Cheers, mate, and congratulations on the 1,500 subs. And another fella, straight out of Georgia of the U.S. of A, the Eddies, or Eddie. <laughs> and he's got a pretty awesome channel. As you can see by his uh, sticker, his, his freaking awesome sticker, it it's just pops out so amazing. Look at that thing. It looks 3D almost. That's awesome. But yeah, he, does, he fixes up lots of old motorcycles, Triumphs, Indians. Uh, I've seen a couple old Hondas on there. He does some machining. Lots of his videos have a lot of, uh, how would you put it, artistic comedy in it. It's, it's, he's got a good channel. It's very, it's, it's very entertaining. If you guys like some good tips and tricks on fixing up old motorcycles and uh, other miscellaneous things, uh, give Eddie's the shout. He's, uh, he's got a good channel. All right, let's get these two classy guys up on the board here. And the Eddie's. Man, that's an awesome sticker. That looks so good. <laughs> Thanks a lot, guys. Well, let's get back to it. All right. So I'm not usually a guy for a look what I got video. Oh, I've been planning, I guess, and kind of working out the logistics of making an automatic center punch. So that's a scissor knurler. Picked that up at KBC Tools for a rather not bad price. And while I was at it, I picked up a couple straight knurlers as well. So what I've got in front of me here, all these round stuff, is all O1 tool steel. Now I was kind of waiting to do this build until I got this uh, unit here. Obviously because a, a bump knurler just ain't going to do it on my lathe to, to knurl this stuff. So I have a 40 TPI, uh, 40 teeth per inch straight knurling tool. Now the idea behind that is to get the corresponding circumference to match 40 teeth per inch uh, evenly. You don't want any odd, odd decimal numbers in there, otherwise it's gonna, you know, in theory, chew it all up and uh, spit it out in not a very nice fashion. All right, so what is this? Third tries, third time's the charm. <laughs> Uh, I'm just gonna go for a single depressed knurl because that's really all I wanted anyway. I'll put just one width of a knurl.
Well, two tries and pretty much same results. I guess maybe that's what they're supposed to look like. Beats me. What it's gonna have to do is it's got a nice grip to it. Really nice. Alright, if I did this right, it should have 20 TPI there. And we're looking good. Well, I had to regrind my tool. Normally, I would go with the compound, you know, do the whole 29 and a half degree angle thing. Uh, but I decided to just go straight in this time, and I had, my tool was kind of made for, you know, doing the angle thing. So it started uh, tearing apart, <laughs> tearing apart the threads. But I managed to uh, ground it flat, so there's no uh, relief on there. And you know, that's that's gonna be okay. That's a 7 16 uh, thread on there. I'll hit it with a tiny triangle file just to clean it up and maybe some scotch brake. Man, this has been a. <laughs> yeah, I'll clean up the burrs in there. Yeah, that's pretty harsh. Actually, it's not bad. It's not bad. I kind of swear my brain is like. Uh... <laughs> it's fading or something. <laughs> I don't know if I'm just tired or, or what. I seem to recall things going a lot better. <laughs> So I'd like to bring this hole, I'm going to enlarge this hole just a little past the knurl, the 5 sixteenths of an inch, and I'm going to plunge an end mill in there just to flatten the hole out on the bottom on the inside. I just feel like I'm forgetting something now every five seconds. Push them, otherwise they freaking skip them. Alright, just shy of one inch. Man, I don't know why this is so hard today. That could have been a little fast, judging by the smoke. Okay, so this is where it might get interesting. This is a four flute, high speed steel, Amazon special end mill. 
Not much good for milling. They do kind of drill okay. Okay, so now I got this being the end, not the end end, but the beginning. Uh oh, it's got to put like a five degree ish taper in there and part it off. Well, the carbide does a nicer job than the high-speed steel does, at least on this stuff. This is going to be a pretty girthy unit, so I may actually taper that off just a scotch more. It's looking a little bit too girthy. I need to give it another half a degree, because I did change the dimensions a little bit. Oh yeah, I really like that. That was 180 grit. Damn, that actually did a really nice job of that. Well, dare we try some 400? Uh oh. Yeah, good call on the 400. All right, well, that'll make up for the crappy knurls and thread, at least a little bit. Nice. Well, you saw that. That was pretty much a perfect part. That ribbon came off all at once at the same time. Ta-da! All right, so this is that first piece that I blundered. Thankfully, it saved me a little bit of knurling, really. So this is going to be the middle of the punch, or the middle section, where it's gonna be, have an internal thread, and then there's gonna be a stop. Uh, we're gonna have to cut it off and flip it over in the chuck. We'll have to slap the sops. We'll have to slap the soft jaws on it for that. And we're gonna turn this down. We gotta put a long external thread on this, too. That'll all be single point, but we're gonna do a, a one half 20 thread for that one. In the meantime, I gotta face all that crap off there. Now, I'm going to try to match it with the other side. Just to give it some separation on the other piece there. To make it look a little more, you know. Just about that. That's about what we want. I had to feed that by hand because I'm still set up for uh, 12 threads per inch on the other side there. <laughs> Got to make a little room for a 716 20 tap, and we're gonna go in about, I guess, half an inch to help accommodate that because I don't have a bottoming tap, so we should be able to get away with that. half an inch.
Okay, and hopefully this tap doesn't give me too much grief. These drills do not go oversized at all. They are pretty tight. That's a cutting wheel in there. Okay. I'm going to have to do the rest by hand. Shortened her up a little bit. For the most part. Just need like an extra... I have one extra thread. Nice. Oh, it's crooked looking though. Well, that's going to have to do, I guess. I, I just took it back a little bit there for the parting tool. And I'm going to polish it up and part it off. All right, so it's been like a week, I guess, <laughs> since I since I left off at this point. Uh, the parting procedure actually worked out well, and it's just a matter now to drill the other side. This will be the part that's holding the the hammer portion. So I'm going to drill and ream this out to three eighths. About an inch deep. Maybe a little bit more. To be honest, I kind of lost track to where I was. <laughs> All right, so now what I have planned for this is uh, maybe, well, probably not this piece, but another piece for sure. And I would like to start, do about half an inch of half inch thread here. And then the cap, I would like to actually overlap that a bit. So when you're adjusting the spring tension, you don't actually ever see any threads. So that's going to be a little tricky. But for now, I'm going to turn this down to 498 thousandths. Assuming I can read this freaking micrometer. Like the last one. Jeez. So I'm just turning this by hand because I already got it set for 20 TPI threads. So I'd just rather not mess with the change gears. 515. Sounds about right. Seems like you're getting lots of deflection with these carbide inserts, so it's kind of causing problems. Pretty close, a little bit under. That's what I, well, I wanted 498, but I think we can make do. All right, well, you saw the whole thread relief process on the last one, so I'm just gonna thread relieve this and single point real quick, and then we're gonna get onto the cap. <laughs> That'll give it a nice good definition for the neural air instead of looking like a blended mess. All right, well, I'm just going to pile it and drill this out to 29 60 fourths, and then we're going to have to bore it back a little bit on the inside to make clearance for this part that I can never find. <laughs>
go let that sucker cool off a bit. Bigging that hole just a little bit, save us a little bit of boring. According to my little bore gauge here, that drill brought us out to yeah, that's a tight drill. <laughs> half a thou over and half an inch for a half inch drill bit. That's that's pretty tight. So I guess we gotta do about 55 thou off the internal bore here, about a half a little over half an inch back. I don't really like these boring bars because they're know, kind of problematic, I guess. And they tend to get in the way sometimes. I can't be sure if my tool is actually sharp enough to work and a couple other reasons. All right, so I had a little bit too much, too much tool sticking out there. I think I gotta bring that tool out just a bit more. Okay, take uh, three. Yeah, it's quite a bit different. It starts deflecting once it gets in there. Oh, I think the tool is rubbing on the bottom there. That's what I mean about these suckers being problematic. They're kind of, you know, getting, you got to get your tool just right and right, like your little cutter piece and then you got to get this, you know, it's got to be just perfect, so. It's a little cumbersome to film, so I'll get right back to you. All right, so I did actually take out another three thousandths on here, and I ran a die over the threads that I single pointed just to clean them up a little bit. There was a little bit of stuff left over there, like it was pretty tight. So it was threading on just a little too tight, and it was rubbing on here a little bit. But now, like that's a really snug fit there and it's going right on just perfect okay don't break it Chris don't break it <laughs> yeah, that's okay and I think I'll go with a 30 degree chamfer if I can just so it doesn't feel quite so pointy when you're uh, you know, pressing down on it. No particular diameter. Or the rest is going to get filed anyway. Alright guys, I'm having a, alright guys, I'm having a hard time figuring out how to end this video, because <laughs> I've made so many freaking parts, you know, most of which I wasn't happy with, you know, despite what you may have heard about me, that I don't wear pants, that I'm more than just one guy, I am not a machinist, but I do try, so as I showed you before, this little guy took a hit maybe, I don't know if I showed you anymore, I, I can't remember, <laughs> this guy took a hit in the chuck, so I made another one. So that's a sacrifice, a sacrificial piece. So here's the new one. It's a little bit different, but actually it, it runs quite a bit smoother in there anyway. So, and this is just awesome. I love how this turned out. That, that's like smooth, like a micrometer almost. That looks great. Feels great too. That is the body for what is soon to be an automatic center punch. So yeah, a lot of brass and tool steel died for this. <laughs> You know, 
You know, these were my prototypes. I started out in brass. I was going to make it out of brass. You know, that was, that was a fail. That was a fail. <laughs> there's some more failed neurals. Oh, there's another failed neural. Oh, wait. Some more failed neurals. <laughs> and a failed spring. Oh, don't forget this guy. So, yeah, you know, it's been a, this is going to be a really hard video to edit. Totally worth it, though. So I hope you guys enjoyed that mess. I already know this ain't going to get out before Christmas, unfortunately. But uh, I hope you had a merry one. And again, a big thanks to the Eddies and Maddie's Workshop for the stickers. Hope you all staying safe out there. And next time around, we'll get to the, the guts of the matter. Thanks again for watching, guys. Peace out. Yeah.